Hi, I'm Jay Haskamp, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. In today's session, we're going to go through the process of creating a new job in Trimble Access. Here we will explain all of the available settings and what they mean. Let's take a look at how this works. From the Trimble Access home screen, choose General Survey. From the General Survey screen, choose Jobs and New Job from the menu. In the New Job dialog box, you will see at the top to enter in a job name. A job name can be up to 16 characters in length. Also, if you wish to separate your jobs in their own project folders, you can choose the folder icon to the right and create a new folder to save that particular job in, or select a folder that's already created to save that job too. All files accompanied with that job will need to be in that folder. Next, we want to look at the job properties. The first one is the coordinate system. Select the coordinate system button to display the following options. The first option is scale factor only, which should be used only for a conventional total station survey. For an integrated survey combining GNSS and conventional observations, select a specific coordinate system or perform a site calibration. The next selection, select from library, allows users to choose a predefined coordinate system and zone that's already stored in the software. Select key and parameters to manually enter in your projection parameters. Select no projection, no datum to work in WGS84 or to perform a multiple point site calibration to a locally defined coordinate system. Any points measured using a conventional instrument will display with null coordinates until a calibration is defined. And broadcast RTCM is an option that can be used if using an RTCM message transmitted from a network RTK provider. In this example, we are going to choose select from library. Under select from library, you see first that we have to define a system. This could be state plane, UTM, or Minnesota or Wisconsin County. In this example, we're going to choose U.S. State Plane 1983. If you pick the zone pull-down, you will see all the different state plane zones that we have to choose from. In this example, I'm going to choose Minnesota Central. And notice that it automatically sets my datum to NAT 83 CONUS. You have the option of whether you want to use a geoid model or not. In this case, we are going to use a geoid model. And we're going to choose geoid 09 US from the list. The next option asks us to set our coordinate types, whether it is grid, ground keyed in scale factor, or ground calculated scale factor. All measured points are reduced to a projected grid. This grid may be at ground or ellipsoid level. Coordinates on a grid at ground level are termed ground. Those coordinates reduced to a grid at ellipsoid level are termed grid. It is important the correct coordinate type is known and selected based on the northern eastern control points or project requirements. The greater the average ellipsoid height of the project, the greater the effect of mixing them up. Notice that if we change the coordinate type to one of the ground selections, we go to the next page, the project location is displayed because it is required if ground is selected for the coordinate type. Define the project height as part of the coordinate system definition when creating a new job. The project height is the height above ellipsoid of the selected coordinate system. If no projection, no datum is selected, the ellipsoid is WGS84. The project height is used for three purposes. First, in COCO calculations to compute grid and ellipsoid distances from measured ground distances when a point has no elevation, or in a 2D survey where a projection has been defined, the project height is required to reduce measured ground distances to ellipsoid distances and compute coordinates, or if using a ground coordinate system, the scale to project the grid from ellipsoid level to ground level is based off the entered project height. If either of these purposes applies, ensure the average project ellipsoid height is entered correctly within plus or minus 20 feet. If the project height or other local site parameters are changed in the middle of a job and a calibration is used, the calibration must be reapplied. For this example, we are going to put a project height in of 900 feet. Choose Enter and Store to save the changes. Now notice that our coordinate system is listed in the box next to Coordinate System under the Properties heading. The next setting down is the Units. Tap on the Units box to set up the units for your project. Once this has been set up, the last settings will become the default settings. Check through these settings and make sure they're set up properly for what you need for your survey. You have options and distance for meters, international feet, and U.S. survey feet. You also have your angular, temperature and pressure, grades, areas, volumes, as well as your distance display, coordinate display, area display, stationing, 
local time format, and so on. Once you have these defined for your project, select Accept to continue. Tap the Linked Files button to link any other job file or text files or CSV files that may contain points that are needed to be accessed by the current job, but not imported into the database. It's important to know that the linked files and jobs need to be in the same folder as the current job in order to work properly. This is typically under your user directory under Trimble Data. The next selection is Active Map. This allows users to take things like RxL road files, TTM surfaces, background images, or DXFs, DXFs or ESRI shapefiles and load them as part of your background map in your project. Feature Code Library allows you to select a feature code library that can be used for automatic feature coding with attributes or to create line work. Tap the button to move to page 2. At the top of page 2 we have our Kogo settings. Under Kogo settings we select whether we want grid, ellipsoid, or ground distances as well as our grid coordinates any weight exponent, magnetic declination, or averaging settings whether we want weighted or unweighted calculations. We also have a sea level ellipsoidal correction checkbox. It is important to know what this box does, especially if you work in county coordinates in Minnesota or Wisconsin. If you are combining GPS control with total station measurements in a county coordinate system, it is imperative that this box is unchecked to obtain proper distance measurements with your total station. You also have the option of turning on the advanced geodetic, which will give you some additional options when doing things like resections and point transformations. Choose Accept to continue. Tap Additional Settings if you wish to use the additional Description 1, Description 2 boxes for your point labels, as well as enable the automatic CSV file creation to add your points to a file. Media Files allow you to take photos with the internal camera on both the tablet and the TSC3, and tag them to either your job or points in your project. And lastly, your information boxes for your reference, description, operator, and notes allows you to key that information in and store it in the project for future reference. Once you have all of your settings the way you need them for your project, tap Accept, and now the job is created and you are brought back to your general survey screen. And that concludes our Tech Talk on creating a new job in Trimble Access. We hope you found this beneficial. We'll join us again next time. Thank you.